Hello guys, how's it going? My name is Dalaran and in today's video I'll be giving you guys a beginner's guide to Mythic Plus Dungeons, some of the builds that I like, the role of an assassination rogue in Mythic Plus Dungeons, and what you guys can do to improve on your playstyle, what kind of builds you can run and which builds are great for which seasons and which keys. I feel Mythic Plus Dungeons has been my favorite type of content since beginning of Legion and so far I still have been very much enjoying it in BFA. Anyway, let's get into the video. Let's first of all talk a bit about our stats. How do you want to stat your assassination rogue? I feel like in Mythic Plus Dungeon, stats and trinkets and Azerite gear all have its own value. And you kind of want to try to see if you can combine those three pieces of puzzles together. It won't be exactly the same thing as a raiding environment. As in Mythic Pluses, I feel that you have a lot more creativity for different builds and playstyles. First of all, I will mention this, I'm not an assassination rogue main, as you can see by my weapons, but I still love the playstyle. And from how much research I have and how much time I have to play World of Warcraft, I feel like the amount of research I was able to do and the different playstyles and hanging out with the chat, one of our live stream, trying out different builds, getting some tips from people that are assassination mains, subtlety mains from EU and NA, I feel like I can safely put this guide video together. First of all, let's talk about stats. What do you want out of your rings, pants, any other piece of gear? So you have your single target rotation, which for secondary stats has haste, Critical Strike, Mastery, Versatility. For multi-target, however, Critical Strike, Mastery, Versatility, Haste. So what I think is the best way to go about this is to find two stats or three stats that are very, very close to one another. Because Mythic Pluses, you'll be doing a mix of single target damage on bosses and multi-target on adds. I feel that Critical Strike is the best trait and the best stat out of those two in a row. Because Crit allows you to do more damage as well as generate extra common points. That can be done with Phantom Knives or in single target with Mutilates and Envenoms. And overall, I feel like Crit is going to be the best trait to stack for Mythic Plus Dungeons. From there on, I feel it's completely okay to get a little bit extra mastery. So Crit Mastery, if you can handle it, for a bit extra oomph and damage. Then sprinkle a little bit of haste, a little bit of versatility. But focus on Crit and then offside Mastery. When it comes to the actual trinkets, I found two trinkets that I like, but there's multiple different playstyles and multiple different trinkets you can run. What I really like is the Lustrous Golden Plumage from King's Rest. Very powerful trinket with agility, and that's what I really want to look for, is trinkets with flat agility. And then an extra effect. In Mythic Plus Dungeons, increasing my versatility in the opener for burst and for AoE situations can be extremely effective. That's a lot of versatility for 20 seconds on a 2 minute cooldown, and lines up really well with my Vendetta. Another trinket that I like, which is very passive, is Dead Eye Spyglass, if you can get it. Equip your attacks and your attacks basically have a chance to mark the target. The more you hit the target, the more crit you build, the more crit you have, the more combo points you can generate and damage you can dish out, single target or AoE. So that one is explanatory. Now when it comes to your Azerite gear, you have different builds and I want to show you guys some of my builds and playstyles that you have with these Azerite pieces of gear because depending on your Azerite bonuses, you will have totally different playstyles. Alright, so the first playstyle I have is called Assassination Knife Build. This one is going to include one shroud certification, anywhere in your piece of gear, and then two sharpened blades. Your auto attacks have uh, your auto attacks increase the damage of your next shuriken toss or poison knife by 330 seconds up to 30 times times two. This one offers very strong single target output damage. I would probably run this type of playstyle in tyrannical keys or in keys where the bosses are certain adds that are way more troublesome than adds around them. Like for example, if you have let's say an ad that's an elite and then little adds around them, the elite needs to die before the little adds. This is where you would play this kind of build. Or again, tyrannical keys. It's actually the fun build, or at least I consider it the fun build for assassination because of the transition damage and the momentum you can take from killing ads to smacking down a boss and doing insanely huge single target burst damage. Now, when it comes to the playstyle of this, you're gonna we'll go with talents for elaborate planning, subterfuge, vigor, cheat death, choice of your own in 75, but I like pairing the weak, always toxic blade, and always poison bomb. Technically, you can go Mark for Death. I don't really think Mark for Death is that great, at least from the times I've been able to test it. But with, I think with certain Azerite traits, it might be decent. I just don't think there's a lot of value in being able to spread Rupture on more than one target. Unless maybe it's a long-term cleave fight from a distance. And there's not too many of those in Mythic Pluses. 
Toxic Blade works really well with this type of playstyle, and Poison Bomb works well with Toxic Blade and can potentially give you extra single target damage, which is also nice, but we are running mostly because of their combo. So let me talk about the opener, because the playstyles for either build for assassination is easy. Maintain full rupture, maintain garrote, and when you don't need to refresh those dots, use Venom. If you guys want to get my basic PvE guide for assassination, I will have a link down for that below if you guys need the real basics. But for this playstyle, you want to make sure you have an opener. Part of the fun of this playstyle is because of your uh, sharpened blades trait, you're gonna stack a lot of damage off of adds that you can take as a momentum towards the boss. So we're going to stack it to 30 to show you guys what the damage would look like in a normal trash pack after you have stacked it. After you've gone from trash to trash to trash, now hitting the boss, of course, unless you do an under rot as a dungeon, or maybe you can find one NPC that you can just kind of build this up on. But it offers a very good, very insane amounts of burst in the opener. Combos really well with Vendetta and any of our other trinkets. So we're gonna go and hit the enemy, hit the boss. And I'll show you what the rotation for that will look like. You're basically trying to get Poison Knife as many times as you can to your new Vendetta window. Now the damage can be pretty high, especially if you get in a lot of procs, and what's nice about this type of damage is it doesn't really have too big of a drop off afterwards. So that is extremely good about this build, is the damage doesn't quite drop off as drastically as some of the other builds that have a lot of punched in damage and then they will really lose a lot of, uh, I guess, air. This one has a lot of punch, but it doesn't quite lose air quite as fast, and if you get lucky with crit procs with poison knife, this can be an insane amount of burst in the opener. As to how this playstyle deals with adds, well, you're still running Shrouded Suffocation, so what you're gonna do is get Garrote on every single enemy in the opener, up to 3 maximum. Also, they fixed the a bug with Shrouded Suffocation, where if you were to use Empowered Shrouded Suffocation on enemies, and then you used your fourth Shrouded Suffocation on a non-empowered enemy, for example, Shrouded, 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 not empowered these would lose a lot of power, but now they don't. You still have the 3,000 versus the under 1,000, or at least just right over 1,000 worth of bleed. So to fix that bug, so this is what you will be doing right now. Open it up with triple garrote, and then trying to put a rupture on enemies. I'm trying to put a rupture to see if you can get poison bomb procs, and you can reapply garrotes as they're about to fall off. So this is going to be the playstyle for this type of build, and if there's certain enemies that have a lot more health, like elite mobs in a pack of uh, trash adds, you can use abilities like in Venom and Toxic Blade in order to kind of focus them down a little bit and make them your primary focus as you're spreading dots to everybody else, making sure to apply garrotes and ruptures on at least three enemies if possible. But I would probably go for more if you have the energy, which you should. Now let's talk about a build that's more about AoE and dealing with a lot of enemies, mostly in fortified keys or if you're going to have a lot of situations where you have a lot of cleave. So assassination as an advantage for the spec compared to the other specs of Rogue, you can deal with two, three and even four mobs, four is kind of your dead zone, but being able to deal with one, two or three hyper efficiently is your advantage. Not only can you deal with them well to do damage, but also you can do damage from a distance by putting a doubt on them. So, in a fight, for example, Siege of Boralus first boss, where you have the boss that will chase a focus target, a ranged add, and a melee add that are not always going to be stacked on each other, Assassination excels at that kind of playstyle, where your bleeds with your opener with Garrote and Triple Shadow Suffocation for this playstyle is going to be insanely strong. Again, for this playstyle, you're going to want to stack Triple Shrouded. Shrouded is still, and Garrote is still going to be majority of your damage, whether you have one stack or three. Blizzard did nerf this, but it's still so powerful, and if you're dealing with trash packs that are always going to be two or three adds, three or four adds, being able to execute two or three or one add very efficiently as a SAS is going to be one of your advantages, which will allow your team to get through a lot of the fortified keys, especially if they have say, stuff like bolstering and enraging, in order to dish out the damage, take care of the enemies, kind of assassinate them, get them out of the way, and continue moving on forward. The builds and the playstyle for this and trinkets are going to be mostly the same. Of course, you have a lot of playstyle on how you'll be playing, although your talents will be slightly different. 
In the first row, elaborate planning is the way to go. Subterfuge is always going to be the way to go, especially with Triple Shrouded. Vigor, Cheat Death, choice of your own, but I'll do like Prey, although here you can go for Iron Wire since you'll be garroting a hell of a lot more often. I would go for Exsanguinate if you are stacking this many garrotes, it's really worth using that for your opener in your burst playstyle. And you can go Poison Bomb if there's not a huge set of adds that you need to be AoE down. But if you want to go Crimson Tempest, this one is extremely well synergetic with this type of playstyle. Let's first talk about the big AoE, since this playstyle is, I guess, more suited for the AoE and the cleave. So in the opener, how you'll be using your Crimson Tempest. What I usually do is get a triple Garrote on enemies, just so you can have the bleeds rolling. So majority of my damage is there, the Garrotes are doing nothing, and I'll throw Rupture on the last enemy. And then what I'll do is use Fan Rise a couple times to make sure all enemies are dotted up. Enemies that have bleed and a poison will give me back a lot of energy, which will give me the energy to Crimson Tempest. And then from there, I'll, I'll go back to rupturing as many enemies as I can and applying garrotes whenever possible, trying to maintain my dots on them 24-7. So let me show you what this type of damage would look like if I didn't slow down for you guys, but I kind of just went bam, 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 and just try to do the most amount of damage in the opener. So you can see the potential of this type of build with garrote and the synergy that it has to have a kind of a rampy, but a very powerful opener on a group of enemies. And that's really it. From there on, you just kind of have to micromanage enemies. You're just trying to make sure that everybody has a dot. You're basically playing Oprah of Rogues. You're like, you get a dot, and you get a dot, and you get a dot. And I know that joke is very, very old. But that's basically all you do. You're just trying to micromanage enemies, making sure that everybody has at least a 4 point rupture. Garotes if ever necessary. And you could do about 20k damage. The more enemies include that you include in this pile, in this cuddle puddle that you are just bleeding down, the more damage you will do. But it's very efficient, has a little bit of ramp. But again, dealing with mobs as efficiently and as fast as possible is going to be part of the advantage of this type of playstyle. Now the last thing for the Garot playstyle you need to know is the opener. And again, I feel like most of you guys should know if you're watching this video, you hopefully watch the guide. Again, link in the description below for the original uh, Assassination Rogue PvE guide, the basic stuff that you need to know. You want to make sure to know the right opener. And this opener is going to be you trying to double up Garot's in order to get the most amount of damage out of it. Also, you're going to be trying to get as much value out of the comp points that you'll be getting in this type of opener. And you're going to be using Exsanguinate to get a lot of early damage, as much early damage as possible. And because I'm having to vanish for this playstyle, my details is not going to give me the most accurate numbers. So, please do keep that in mind as I'm getting my opener done on the enemy dummy. So this type of place tell you'll have a lot of bursty bleed damage in the opener and then from there a lot of your damage wanes. The difference with this type of build, it deals with adds very well and in terms of bosses, this is where a lot of the burst damage on fortified weeks where the bosses are not beefed up but rather the adds, this will deal enough damage to bosses to get them low enough health for your party to finish the boss off and you can continue on. So you are going to deal some damage to the boss, but it is going to wane very quickly because you're not going to have those double garrotes that are fully empowered the whole time. And Vendetta is a pretty long cooldown compared to how it was in Legion. So it's going to be the big burst and then just trying to maintain and tussle your way to the end. Very effective still regardless as you are going to have to choose as assassination what type of build you want to run. Is it going to be appropriate for your situation? And most of that stuff can really just be learned rather than explained. But as I said before, you guys have two builds. One for tyrannical weeks and one for fortified weeks. Some of the different builds you can run. 
And of course you mix and match a lot of these builds, but I would have to say that you want to have at least one Shrouded Suffocation, and if you are going to double up for the Knife build, I would say probably should be running two of those. There is one more trait if you go on to go for pure single target damage though, and it is going to end up being Double Dose. This one is pure single target. You're not going to get that much value out of it from AoE because you're not using fan of knives. So in a dungeon where you're using some AoE for adds, single target for boss, maybe some mix of AoE and single target for some trash packs, some boss fights, you will have very limited use of double dose, which is why most people say you shouldn't try to go for heavy amounts of double dose, at least for your playstyle. Anyway guys, thank you so much for watching this video. Hopefully this video gave you guys a few ideas of what you can do for your assassination rogues in Mythic Plus Dungeons and how you might want to build yourself for different situations. Hopefully this video was enough of a basic guide for you guys and of course there's a bunch of links below that you guys can check out. As always guys, thank you so much for watching this video. I do hope you enjoyed. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. And as always, I'll see all of you in another video.